collection of narrative bars relief stories on Bora Buddha Wall. Bora Buddha is constructed in such a way that it reveals various levels of terraces, showing intricate architecture that goes from being heavily ornamented with bars reliefs to being plain in Arubadata circular terraces. The first four terrace walls are showcases for bar relief sculptures. These are exquisite, considered to be the most elegant and graceful in the ancient Buddha's world. The bas reliefs in Bora Buddha depicted many scenes of daily life in 8th century ancient Java, from the courtly palace life, permit in the forest, to those of commoners in the village. It also depicted temple, marketplace, various flora and fauna, and also native vernacular architecture. People depicted here are the images of king, queen, princes, noble, courtier, soldier, servant, commoners, priest and hermit. The reliefs also depicted mythical spiritual beings in Buddhist beliefs such as Ashuras, Gods, Bodhisattvas, Kinaras, Gandharvas and Apsaras. The images depicted on bar relief often served as reference for historians to research for certain subjects, such as the study of architecture, weaponry, economy, fashion, and also mode of transportation of 8th century maritime Southeast Asia. One of the famous renderings of an 8th century Southeast Asian double outrigger ship is Bora Buddha ship. Today, the actual size replica of Bora Buddha ship that had sailed from Indonesia to Africa in 2004 is displayed in the Samudra Aksa Museum, located a few hundred meters north of Bora Buddha. The Bora Buddha reliefs also pay close attention to Indian aesthetic discipline, such as bows and gesture that contain certain meanings and aesthetic value. The reliefs of noblemen and noble women, kings, or divine beings such as Apsaras, Taras, and Bodhisattvas are usually portrayed in Triphanga pose, the three bend pose on neck, hips, and knee, with one leg resting and one up holding the body weight. This position is considered as the most graceful pose, such as the figure of Zura Sundari holding a lotus. During Bora Buddha excavation, archaeologists discovered color pigments of blue, red, green, black, as well as bits of gold foil, and concluded that the monument that we see today, a dark gray mass of volcanic stone, lacking in color, was probably once coated with Vajali or white plaster and then painted with bright colors, serving perhaps as a beacon of Buddha's teaching. The same Vajrali plaster can also be found in Sari, Kalasan and Suyu temples. It is likely that the bars reliefs of Bora Buddha was originally quite colorful, before centuries of torrential tropical rainfalls peeled off the color pigments. Bora Buddha contains approximately 2,670 individual bars reliefs, 1,460 narrative and 1,212 decorative panels, which cover the facades and balustrades. The total relief surface is 2,500 square meters, 27,000 square feet, and they are distributed at the hidden foot, Kamadatu, and the five square platforms, Rupadatu. The narrative panels, which tell the story of Sadhana and Manohara, are grouped into 11 series that encircle the monument with a total length of 3,000 meters, 9,800 feet. The hidden foot contains the first series with 160 narrative panels, and the remaining 10 series are distributed throughout walls and balustrades in four galleries starting from the eastern entrance stairway to the left. Narrative panels on the wall read from right to left, while those on the balustrade read from left to right. This conforms with Pradaxina the ritual of circumambulation performed by pilgrims who move in a clockwise direction while keeping the sanctuary to their right. The hidden foot depicts the workings of karmic law. The wall 
walls of the first gallery have two superimposed series of reliefs, each consists of 120 panels. The upper part depicts the biography of the Buddha, while the lower part of the wall and also the balustrades in the first and the second galleries tell the story of the Buddha's former lives. The remaining panels are devoted to sadhanas for their wandering about his search, terminated by his attainment of the perfect wisdom. The Law of Karma, Karmavibhanga The Karmavibhanga seen on Bora Buddha's hidden foot, on the right depicting sinful act of killing and cooking turtles and fishes, on the left those who make living by killing animals will be tortured in hell, by being cooked alive being cut, or being thrown into a burning house. The 160 hidden panels do not form a continuous story, but each panel provides one complete illustration of cause and effect. There are depictions of blameworthy activities, from gossip to murder, with their corresponding punishments. There are also praiseworthy activities, that include charity and pilgrimage to sanctuaries, and their subsequent rewards. The pains of hell and the pleasure of heaven are also illustrated. There are scenes of daily life, complete with the full panorama of samsara, the endless cycle of birth and death. The encasement base of the Bora Buddha temple was disassembled to reveal the hidden foot, and the reliefs were photographed by Kasijan Chepas in 1890. It is these photographs that are displayed in Bora Buddha Museum, Karmorpanga Museum, located just several hundred meters north of the temple. During the restoration, the foot encasement was reinstalled, covering the Karmorpanga reliefs. Today, only the southeast corner of the hidden foot is revealed and visible for visitors. The story starts with the descent of the Lord Buddha from the Tushi to heaven and ends with his first sermon in the Deer Park near Benares. The relief shows the birth of the Buddha as Prince Siddhartha, son of King Sudhodana and Queen Maya of Kapilavastu, in Nepal. The story is preceded by 27 panels showing various preparations, in the heavens and on the earth, to welcome the final incarnation of the Bodhisattva. Before descending from Tushi to heaven, the Bodhisattva entrusted his crown to his successor, the future Buddha Maitreya. He descended on earth in the shape of white elephants with six tusks, penetrated to Queen Maya's right womb. Queen Maya had a dream of this event, which was interpreted that his son would become either a sovereign or a Buddha. While Queen Maya felt that it was the time to give birth, she went to the Lumbini Park outside the Kapilavasta city. She stood under a plaxa tree, holding one branch with her right hand, and she gave birth to a son, Prince Siddhartha. The story on the panels continues until the prince becomes the Buddha. The stories of Buddha's previous life Jataka and other legendary people of Adana. Jatakas are stories about the Buddha before he was born as Prince Siddhartha. They are the stories that tell about the previous lives of the Buddha, in both human and animal form. The future Buddha may appear in them as a king, an outcast, a god, an elephant, but, in whatever form, he exhibits some virtue that the tale thereby inculcates. The Madanas are similar to Jatakas, but the main figure is not the Bodhisattva himself. The saintly deeds in the Vedanas are attributed to other legendary persons. Jatakas and the Vedanas are treated in one and the same series in the reliefs of Bora Buddha. The first 20 lower panels in the first gallery on the wall depict the Sadhana Kamara Vedana, or the saintly deeds of Sadhana. The first 135 upper panels in the same gallery on the balustrades are devoted to the 34 legends of the Jitakamala. The remaining 237 panels depict stories from other sources, as do the lower series and panels in the second gallery. Some Jatakas are depicted twice, for example the story of King Saibi, Rama's forefather. Sadhana's search for the ultimate truth. Gandhi
Gandhi viewed this the story told in the final chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra about Sadhana's tireless wandering in search of the highest perfect wisdom. It covers two galleries, third and fourth, and also half of the second gallery, comprising in total of 460 pounds. The principal figure of the story, the youth Sadhana, son of an extremely rich merchant, appears on the 16th panel. The preceding 15 panels form a prologue to the story of the miracles during Buddha's Samadhi in the garden of Jetu at Sravasti. During his search, Sadhana visited no fewer than 30 teachers, but none of them had satisfied him completely. He was then instructed by Manjusri to meet the monk Megasri, where he was given the first doctrine. As his journey continues, Sadhana meets, in the following order, Suprates Theta, the physician Mega, spirit of knowledge, the banker Muttaka, the monk Saradvan, the Upasika Iasa, spirit of supreme enlightenment, Bismotaranagota, the Brahmin Jayasmayatna, Princess Maitrayani, the monk Sudasana, a boy called Indri Isvara, the Upasika Prabhuta, the banker Ratnachuda, King Anla, the god Shiva Mahadeva, Queen Maya, Bodhisattva Maitreya and then back to Manjusri. Each meeting has given Sadhana a specific doctrine, knowledge and wisdom. These meetings are shown in the third gallery, 